guys, how you doing? Just getting back from an awesome canoe trip with Doug, which you guys are about to watch right now. We canoed, we fished, we hiked, had a good time for a few days. Before we jump into the actual video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor for this trip, Epic Provisions. Epic Provisions is a brand that makes food using consciously sourced animal products. And they just came up with a new Epic Performance Bar in four flavors. Peanut butter, almond butter, lemon, and peanut butter chocolate. The Epic Performance Bar contains simple non-GMO ingredients. It's wild, free, and fueled by nature. It's a gluten-free, soy-free, kosher, 12-gram protein bar that is made using cage-free egg whites and nuts. It also has no added sugar and no unspecified natural ingredients. You can see here on the packaging that each bar has no more than six ingredients and that are all specified right on the front here so you can know exactly what you're putting into your body. The lemon flavor is both paleo and Whole30 compliant. The Epic Performance Bar worked out great on the trip. Uh, it's a great snack for athletes, anyone who wants to eat food with simple, straightforward ingredients, keep their energy going. There's a benefit of purchasing the Epic Performance Bar through Amazon Subscribe and Save. A benefit that you have as an Amazon Prime member, you can save 5% when you subscribe and save and up to 15% when you subscribe and save at least five items. Convenient to order on Amazon.com or the Amazon app, and with an easy to set delivery date and delivery cadence, you can be sure that you're always going to have your Epic Performance Bars when you need them ready to go without having to run to the store. Okay guys, that's it. I want to give a huge thank you again to Epic Performance. They reached out uh, with a good product, with something that I can actually use on a trip, so shout out to them. I hope you guys check them out. Give them some support for supporting me. Well, nothing left to say, but on to the video. So, it's always the same thing at the beginning of a bigger trip. Like, I realize this is only a four-day trip, but we're doing legit kilometers, like 30 clicks a day type thing, maybe 25 one day or whatever. So, um, and then on the last day, it's the fourth day, we're paddling almost all day still, unless we make up some crazy time. But my point is, I always start these trips thinking like, man, how am I going to do this for that long? I've been paddling for two hours, not even, and my arms are shot. Feels like my... It was super heavy. I'm huffing and puffing. That's what happens when you live <laughs> in such a spot where you can't just get out and do things, right? And that's that is an excuse. I do have the Detroit River I can go paddle on, and I can go hike on that old dump that they put grass seed on and stuff. Yeah, it's a million degrees, and and I'm just sick of it. So the thing is, I'm moving soon. I'm moving up north. And I'm going to be able to be doing these things every day. I have a lake in my backyard, literally. I have trails to go use, and I have land to go use. I'm going to try to become a healthy Joe, a healthier Joe. But, that all said, I start out all of these trips like this, and by the second day, third day, I'm in my groove. Second day's a bit rushed. But by the third day, I'm in my groove, and uh, everything's good. And this is not going to be the last canoe trip of the year, either. I want to do a legit longer trip, maybe up in Killarney once I'm there. But when life gives you rivers, paddle them. So we're not far along at all yet. We've only been going for a little bit short amount of time, but I'm hungry. It's almost 10 o'clock. Um, <clears throat> eat supper a few, uh, ate breakfast a few hours ago. So I'm gonna stop and grab a couple snacks out of my backpack and put the rest of the food near the top so I can grab them as I'm going. We're just heading out of Tim Lake, back into the Tim River, and we will be coming up to our first portage shortly. It's a short one, it's only 120 meters, and that's really, most of them for today are like that. And few and far between, I'm pretty short. That's a good thing. And we're going with the current so we can make up some time today. It's supposed to really start pouring down tonight at around seven. So get a good day's paddle in, set up the tarp and hunker down for the night. I did end up finding my tent for those who watched my gear video I went to my storage locker and I found the trusty old big Agnes let's 
can start to see some fall colors coming in over there. Nothing too crazy just yet. Some oranges, some rusty looking colors. Another couple weeks will be probably peak. It's September 20th right now maybe. Yep, September 20th. Coming up to our first portage. Even though we're on a river and we're going with the current, it's a very wide river and uh, it's late in the year so the water's down a lot. Tons of lily pads uh, piling right through them actually. So we're hoping that once we pass the portage up here, it narrows down and speeds up, the current speeds up a bit. I have been down here before probably four times at least, but old Joe doesn't remember things too great. So once I see landmarks, things start to come back to me, but I can't remember what's up ahead at all. So we shall see. We're being followed. There's a group of like 20 people that can stay in pretty close on our tail. We really uh, took our time at the beginning, messing around, taking, playing with our cameras and stopping at a, an island site I guess we should not have. So we'll bust through this thing and uh, try and lose those guys. That's the thing, they said it's a busy weekend, so I guess it is. So I think I'll show you guys my setup for portaging, what I do when I come to a portage, everything I really need to do, just to show you how convenient it is, how um, efficient and, and easy it is. So here's my yoke. We keep the yoke just loose in the, in the front of the boat. What we're gonna do is look for the tape on either side, just pop it on. I usually, I definitely need two hands for this. Then I'll just squeeze the boat together and it pops on and that thing's solid. I got my yoke pad, makes life easy. I'll normally tuck my, my GoPro down so it's not banging around inside my boat whatever's loose inside my boat. This time it's my water bottle, my sunglasses, and a piece of paper. So I will empty my water bottle by drinking it or pouring it out, put these away. My fishing pole gets tucked up in the front underneath and then rests back here on this thwart. What a weird word, eh? Thwart, thwart. <laughs> I got these small gear ties and I just kind of wrap them on. I only need one. I just have this extra one for extra. So my sunglasses and my water bottle will go in my pocket for now. Fine like that, and I've got my map as well loose. That'll go in my other pocket. I'm wearing my Fall Raven Vita Pro trousers. Had these things for quite some years now. Okay, so all that's left is my paddle and my backpack. My, my uh, life jacket's attached to my backpack and that's fine to stay there. I used to put my seat down. I still do, but I used to too. <laughs> I used to put my seat down. I don't anymore because I don't need to. The backpack doesn't hit it. I always used to think it would ride on it, but it's fine. So that's all good. I'll carry my, my pole. I will hold uh, the rope. And then we're golden. So what I normally do is put my camera away because it really kind of sucks carrying your camera, your tripod, your paddle on the portage. But people were coming and I was running, running away. So anyways, that you saw how I did it. It's pretty easy. I took longer because I was showing you guys because I'm out of practice. And it was the first portage I've done in a couple months. So, things will get smoother. Backpack will get lighter. <laughs> Life will find a way. <laughs> Alright, 
I will meet up with you guys on the other side. Well, we're on the other side now. We're getting exactly what we wanted. A nice, tight, narrow stream, creek, river. That's it, river. It's a river. drop and it's a long trip I am not trying to just surf down it that's a danger waiting to happen oh yeah she's soggy bud she's a soggy one the feeties are getting wet oh the feeties are getting wet. Tell, but Doug did it without getting over the boat. Major Doug strikes again. Ah. Okay. <laughs> oh, buddy! Almost danger, Joe. Pad McGee. Hello, hello. Despite what it might have sounded like by my incessant whining, my feet did actually not get wet. They stayed dry, and I'm wearing those new Solomon boots that I that I bought and wore. Maybe on the last trip with Doug, actually, I had them on. I told you I'd tell you what I thought about them. So they're doing good so far. So far, so good. Last time we were full of muck. We got out here from falling in the uh, in the dank. You remember that? That danky muddy water. But uh, yeah, doing good. What's that? What? <laughs> the uh, we think we've lost the people now for good. The um, they were taking their time on the portage. One guy accidentally took a little tumble. So uh, he's all right. But we are fine to continue on, and we are probably not going to see many people. I would assume now from on, from now on. But, uh, yeah, man, this is my favorite time of year to be out. It's cool in the air, overcast, no rain. It's a huge thing. No bugs. I can handle this. I can handle this. Blah. You? Muck. You muck. <laughs> He's pro. Look how nice it is out here. Oh, it does stink. That's the way we came from. Uh, 
that's the way we go. I gotta jump across this thing, I think. With my camera, too, huh? I don't know. I don't know about this. I did it. Isn't that a nice looking tree? I believe it's a tamarack. So soft, the uh, bristles, what are they called? Needles, needles, soft needles. We're in like a tamarack grove. These are all very pretty. Uh oh. Doug's saying it's getting narrower and shallower over there. We might be pulling these canoes before the day's through. We got some real low water here. I'm talking like about a foot. And it's a good thing that our boats are small. Okay, we're through it now, but very narrow, very shallow. You can see on the banks. It's a yellow birch. That's a Betula alleganensis. <laughs> oh. Well, we've stopped for lunch. It's almost one o'clock. I'm really hungry. I've been using this Kevlar bag for my food lately. Again, I go over it in my um, in my gear video. It's better, more convenient. Um, don't have to try to find a, a branch to hang it over. A lot of the times, depending on where you are, trees grow like this in a, in a conical shape, in a cone. There's not really far outstretched branches. And for a bear bag, normally you, you look for a, an outstretched branch, you hang it over that, down a bit from it so the bear can't crawl out onto the, the branch and get it, or get it from the ground. But with these Kevlar bags, they can't get into them, so I just tie it to the bottom of a tree and call it good. Never had a problem. So for food, I've got a uh, pretty good staple, I think. I've got all homemade uh, meals. My, my, my wife makes, whenever she makes uh, spaghetti or chili or whatever, like stuff like that, we don't have leftovers. I take the leftovers and I dehydrate them. No leftovers for them. So I've got spaghetti chili and surprise surprise another spaghetti so those are all decent meals for supper got hefty amounts in each but for lunches I've got sandwiches and this is what I normally bring on canoe trips it's just convenient uh, my stomach dough is all right with it and it stays pretty decent in the heat so I've got a flatbread I brought four of them because on our last day, our fourth day might be a longer day. We're not staying here a fourth night, but we might here, be here for most of the day. I like to get dry salami, like a German salami or a Hungarian Genoa. Genoa. And I ration out four or five pieces for each sandwich before I uh, leave home. I don't just throw a bunch in there. So I know... This one I did five, normally I do four, but they're thin, right? Then I also got some cheese. And because it's this time of year, it's not so big, not such a big deal, it's not so hot, I don't mind bringing cheese. I got some Swiss. Well, of course, just, you know, rip the bag right open, that's no big deal. Don't need to, don't need to put it back in there or anything. Oh, bam Now normally, and if you watch my videos, you will know this. I am a mustard man. <laughs> but mustard packets are few and far between these days. So no mutard. No mutard on there. I almost squirted some into a bag and brought it that way, but it always just gets so messy and it's like a one-time use type thing. So, Cheers. A little bit of a heavy, uh, heavy birch bark from that yellow birch. 
canteen kit for my, uh, my whole cook kit this this round. So, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, that sandwich was good. It hit the spot. I'm still really hungry. I'm going to try one of these epic performance bars that I brought. This one is the peanut butter chocolate. So you guys heard me do the whole spiel earlier on in the video. Mmm, peanut buttery. Mm, it's got little chunks, little chunks. Not too bad. They caught back up to us. We thought we lost them. <laughs> we gotta get out of here, man. <laughs> we gotta finish up our foods and get out of here. I, uh, they're all camping on the. We were we were in the park office with them, and we know that they're camping on this this lake here. So this will be the last time we see them. But it's just uh, it's just funny. We, it's not even a big deal. We've just been laughing and joking about it the whole time. But. Doug's cooking up a little mountain house dealio, and uh, I'm all done mine. So, oh, that bar was good. I like that bar a lot. I got a bar for you, a lemon bar for you to try, Doug. I like lemon. You like lemon? I like lemon. Perfect, because I don't. Well, as you can see, I've donned my LEG outfit. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. There we go. Biakasha, what it is, boy. All right, we, uh, we're obviously done eating lunch. Doug is 30 yards in front of me. Yeah. And it's coffee and it's warm lunchy. Belly's all full now. So we were there for a little while, maybe an hour tops. Not even. Um, we still got a ways to go. It's 145, 148. So we still got four hours or so to go. It's not so bad. Making pretty good time now. For the longest time on that Tim River, it was very windy and uh, meandering even. So we took our time in there. No fishing yet. There's no real good spots to fish yet. Uh, hoping tonight we can troll a little bit. We'll be off the river tonight. And then, uh, there's some there's some trout brook trout where we'll be staying. So hopefully we can get a some trolling in, get a fish or two. It's no big deal if we don't. We got food, but it's always nice to catch a fish. Tomorrow it's supposed to storm, so it might be just a good day to get um, distance done. And then the day after that we'll be on the Petawawa River, and the Petawawa River is the river that Doug and I took last fall, right around this time actually, across Algonquin Park the whole way. It was like a Seven, eight, nine day trip. I can't really remember. Getting red by Birdie. Yay. Check it out, we're just paddling by and there's this uh, upturned tree, there's all its roots there. And it's ripped out some rocks out of the ground and then toppled over down there too. Pretty neat. It's actually pretty common to find this. Man, nobody comes this way or else there'd be paths cleared through the lily pads. Uh, we're going right to the black portages. I see the first one in front. The black portage means they're unmaintained. And again, these are the big chain of them that I did on my solo trip maybe two, three, uh, maybe two springs ago. So I know these, these ones that we're doing today, these like five of them or four of them, whatever, are fine. But the ones tomorrow, 
are the big bad boys. And those are not fun. We're just coming up to our first portage here. I'm gonna grab myself a little snacky poo. I'm hungry already. A little Joe didn't bring enough food. He's realizing <laughs> this is <laughs> day morning one, afternoon one. Oh, look at this, Doug. We gotta go that way. Yeah. Um, this is such an or unorganized trip for me. Just not having all my stuff at home, kind of thing. But I'll survive. I'll be all right. Maybe. Well, hello. Halfway through the first one. This is only like a 250 or something. My backpack is heavy. When I put that camera in there, the tripod, it really, really made it heavier. Okay. This is not good. I'm having this much trouble on this one. This is nothing compared to tomorrow. Absolutely nothing. The rain has found us. All right. here I've already got my big camera away for this last uh, portage I think I'm just gonna leave it away until we get to camp 300 it was only 300 bog pond to longbow we came longbow to bog pond and I can actually see the next portage right here across well we just did a 700 or what was marked as 700 and I look on my map and it says it's actually a 560 and that's just signed 700 and it was long. You know, it's one of those ones where it's like, this isn't 700 meters, this is like a thousand meters, a kilometer and a half. But it really was only 560. The backpack is very heavy. I moved around some stuff. So I have my tripod just at the top, laying it flat like this across. I moved around some stuff. I stuck it down in the side, uh, the long ways. It seems to have distributed the weight better, put the cameras down lower and stuff. So it's still super heavy and um, it's gonna suck tomorrow, but it is what it is. Even if I have to do a little bit of a double carry uh, for some part of it, it'll be all right. So we're just looking for our next <laughs> portage. We're on these little tiny puddle lakes, eh? Like very, very small. Um, there's two campsites on this one, but we're gonna get over to Divine. And uh, there's some brook trout in there. And it's nice, it'd be nice to camp on one of these small little lakes. I have it completely uh, secluded nobody comes back in here and nobody does these black portages to get back into these black campsites so actually it probably would be a good idea to even try and troll through here I'm not really in a rush it's four o'clock now I'll be up camp by five plenty of time it is raining still it's just spitting though it's not a not a big deal so I got a EGB lure on it's a decent size I'm just gonna paddle slow to the portage and troll it Like I said, there are brook trout in here. Let you know. Sometimes. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I can't say it. I'm filled. <laughs> He's going in. Making it, Bert. Yay. Shout out to hard work. Isn't that what he does? He clap with one hand. What does he do? Oh, this. What does he do? Casey Neistat. Or, that's like the high thing? What? We're not going to do that. Okay, last portage. She's raining. It's no, more, no longer spitting. You peeing? <laughs> it's raining. He's peeing. We got a 410 to get into from Ranger Lake, Ranger Joe Lake, into Divine. Well, we're on our last lake. This is divine divine lake i'm not feeling very divine <laughs> feeling pretty beat to be honest with you my hips are taking the brunt of it on the those portages the, the, the pack the weight of the pack is just wearing me down i'm not in good shape i guess um 
tomorrow is daunting. Yeah, if I'm being honest, I'm concerned about tomorrow. I'm gonna have to double carry. The rain's coming down now, as you can see. I'm not even putting on any kind of rain jacket or anything. Just trying to get to camp. Um, it actually did calm down a little bit from what it was a minute ago too. So uh, when I looked at the weather before we left, it said at seven it was gonna start up real bad tonight and uh, start thundering, st thunderstorming all night kind of thing. And it's just after five now, so. We'll be at camp shortly, in 20 minutes, and not even, and um, yeah, get with you then. I gotta eat supper, I gotta eat something. I got a headache, and I'm not doing too good. It'll be fine, I just gotta get back into the swing of things. It's like this every time. Earlier today, when I talked to you guys about paddling, and how I was like, oh, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, my arms are dead, and I feel that way every time. My arms are fine, I can paddle forever now. The portage, it's kicking my butt. Doug's found our camp, so it seems. The only one on this lake, so it's not like we have uh, an option to choose from. It looks pretty hilly. Pretty, pretty hilly. So mean to his boat. Uh -huh. So you're so mean to your boat. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Hey, it's really growing for someone to. Oh, fancy. Oh, some wood, look at that. Fire pit, wood. Oh, we're balling. Look at that beautiful bench. Yep, lots of flat area. Flat area. Place okay. to hang a tarp. We're good. We're golden, and it's uh, really protected. Yeah, it is actually. Okay. It's nice and dry under here. Look, it's Chad, here. Chad. I'll take it. You take it? I take. <laughs> First order of business is to get this tarp up. There's a decent spot here, I'll show you. Between that tree and that one over there. Then we can sit, have our fire um, protected, have that bench protected. That's what we gotta do. Shut your face. <laughs> wow. Doug, ladies and gentlemen. Doug. Oh my goodness. <laughs> More of a seating area here. Sounds good. in a bit. So just tying a taut line hitch. Two on the inside, one on the outside. Just look at the shirts. Just look at the shirts. I can't remember. I never got that shirt. No? Alright, there you go. Right here, keep it on. On this side, I'm just going to get the uh, line stretcher and make it bigger. Doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. We can go this one. We can go that one. That's not so protected though. No. This knot here. No. We'll this go. This is not my, uh, my line. I'm just going to tie regular knots. I don't think that we should do it to that one. We're going to have about 14 knots here. Okay. You need some slack? No, but it's not going to be no fancy pants. I don't care. Just get her on, bud. All right, cool. So we do have it up onto the perfect trees there. To there and then bunny ears. Mm -hmm. bunny ears. yeah bunny goes around the tree okay. down his hole there you go. Mm -hmm. there. good job Emmy Slide it down a bit. Oh, you don't want the fire under it? Well, a little bit. 
Yeah, about be, halfway. Yeah, halfway. To it, yeah. For sure. Is that there? Yeah, I like that. Perfect. Alrighty. Some percord up in here, uh, up in here, uh. Alright, I'll get some. Alright, I figured it out. So, this is handy to have. Got this little paracord wrapped around here to go to as much as you figure you need. I need about maybe five or six feet for the one spot. I'm gonna make it a little bit longer just in case. That should be safe. And then, it's got this little cutter dealie on the inside. Someone sent this to me a long time ago. Would you look at it? Oh, speaking of that too, Ed Bassmaster. I've seen some new stuff from Ed Bassmaster. The old, um, well, would you look at it? Look at that car. Would you, ju would you just look at it? That guy. Remember that guy? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, man. I'm going off on a tangent. New videos from Ed Bassmaster. Comedy gold. So we got our cord. Nice and easy way to, to attach it to a tarp uh, tie-out would be looping it, putting it through, and then running both the ends through that loop. And then that bite's on there really easy, easy to come out, or sorry, to come on undone, and you don't have to tie it. So, there she is. Do you know the name of that, Doug? Sheep? No, it's not Sheep Bend. Okay, perfect. There she be. What, shout out to Sheep Bend. Shout out to Sheep Bends, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez Louise. Uh-huh. You okay, Doug? Oh, I was just gonna do the shout out to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop that. Oh my goodness. And we would laugh. Alright, so that one's rigged up. When I say rigged up, I really do mean it. It's just like wrapped. It's just like wrapped around this tree a million times. You got that covered over there? Yeah. Shout out to pouring spikes in this tree. <laughs> shout out to watching for injuries. Okay. Shout out to not saying shout out anymore. Yeah. Oh, I see you're getting back to your roots. Ah. Ah. Look at that. That's pretty slick. That is pretty, pretty slick, bud. Now where does that go? <gasps> to the tarp. If only there was a way to attach it. Well, I got a little... Trucker's loop there already. I'm just gonna come through. Look at you. All the way through. <clears throat> Excuse me. This will take a minute because it's all knotted up in the end. Okay, I'm gonna stop filming that. Uh -huh. yeah. Doug's trying some fancy little toggle dealy. We're boy scouting it up here. Mm. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Oh, look at you. Pretty fancy. You got a rip in that little thing already. No way. Already. It's like 25 years old. <gasps> that's brand new. I don't think so. Well, that's new to me. <gasps> What'd you do, Richard? Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, I need a new tarp. My finger looks like E.T. It's so long. <laughs> it's like a like a wormy worm. <laughs> okay, okay is day good? one. <laughs>
Fucking Leary fucking. <laughs> what song is that even? I'm a Believer by the Monkees. Oh, yeah. Shrek. Shrek. Hey? Shrek. No, not Shrek, you child. Shrek. It's from the hey, Monkees. Hey, Shrek. Princess Fiona. Shrek. What are you? Don't tell me. Are you eight years old? I know these things. All right. Tanti stan, ya? Yeah? Stan? That's good, ya? Yeah? So we've been at this campsite for some time, setting up. It's actually really nice. Um, when you see a black portage or a black triangle on the, on the, on the, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> on the map, um, <laughs> it usually means that it's not a good, it's, it's unkept, it's, it's not uh, maintained or whatever. But this site is awesome. It's literally raining out there on the lake. I can hear it hitting the tops of the trees. It's not coming down. We're protected by like, um, I see a big white pine, I see a yellow birch, I see a bunch of white pine, so some broadleaf trees and a big white pine with lots and lots of needles on it. So we're just sitting here, no rain under here, which is great. Um, and then we will be out of here by the time it start to do, does start to drip through, hopefully by tomorrow. <sighs> or, or, if that thunderstorm comes tonight, maybe not. But all we got to do now is just kind of get some firewood. The tents are all set up. I'm just finishing up this. And uh, it'll be time for supper. It's 6 o'clock now. So, yeah, it's definitely time for supper. I was telling Doug, I'm really glad I checked in his sleeping bag uh, compression sack before I came. I had my summer bag in there. This one's a negative two. I think that one was a plus two. So I'm a cold little boy. I need the little extra, extra comfort. So I, when I went to the uh, storage locker to get my tent out, I grabbed this guy too. No pillow though. It's a, it's a peasant kind of trip. You got a pillow? You got a pillow? I got a pillow. He's got a pillow. I never bring a pillow. I always bring I a pillow. A pill. Let me have it. If you're not used to using it anyway, just let me use it. I got my clothes bag. Just let me use your pillow. You can have my pillow. Oh. I got a pillow. That's no fun. I never use a pillow. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. Wetterling's little camp dealie. All right. Got my little uh, Wetterling's uh, camp hatchet and uh, silky saw. Got to go find some wood for the fire. And I have my Adventure Sworn Scout. So that's all the processing tools I brought. I'll put this on my belt real quick and I will head out as well. Try and gather some more wood. Did have a little bit here left for us, which is very helpful from the previous person. What <laughs> Alright. Off we go. No. Oh, I see a piece of wood. Perfect. Good thing about these back away sites here is that not very populated lot or often I guess. So firewood is abundant. Right off the hop. It's just big hardwood. It's probably a maple. It is a maple. So we'll get that with the Adventure Sworn Scout, see how she does on that. There's boogies. No boogies. No boogies. Nice. Can't just break it off. I had hoped I could. Nice. 
didn't even break where I was chopping it. All right, that's a good decent size, but I'm not gonna just get that. I'm gonna get as much as I can from here, carry it all back to the camp together. Perfect. I still take this one too now. Oh, that's not good. That's not dead, that part. Okay, oops. All right, so we got these two at least. And I'll go bring these back and try and find some more. It smells so nice.
Oh, you can't see me. You can't see me. Here, rip. There you go. Okay. 10 to 7. I've already filled up about two thirds of this with water. Just from the lake, non treated water or anything like that. I'm going to boil it up and drop in some spaghetti and then let it simmer. So I just threw a bunch of wood on, as you saw. I think I might be able to nestle this in pretty, pretty securely. Yoinks! Not securely at all. Not securely at all, Joe. There we go. That's secure, right? That stick won't burn. <laughs> so I only lost a little bit of my water. It'll be okay. My lid's a little bit dented. I hit it with a piece of wood last time on accident. I was trying to... I was trying to split a piece of wood and it came down on the lid. Womped it up. Made it all wampusy. Wompity? Wampus? Wampus. Womp womp? I might have drank a liter of wine. <laughs> Oh man, got to cut down that weight though, right? The portage and weight. I need a haircut, and this needs to go. This is too much. This is too much tash. Much tash. Much tash. You want much tash? You want much tash? Having fun. Oh, she's boiling. Only spilled a little bit more. Perfect. All right, let's check this out. Super good homemade spaghetti. Thank you, Will. Look at the mushrooms. Look at the mushroom boy. Oh, shout out scrambled. Oh. Bam, son. Now it's just got to go back on. I think actually that amount of water is fine. So I actually meant to spill that water that I spilled earlier because I knew. We do this. And then we eat. Oh, yeah. She done, bud. She done. All right, guys. Check this masterpiece out. Legit leftover spaghetti style. I have a red flashing battery. The rest of my batteries are in my backpack. I really want to eat this, so I'm just going to eat this up, and I'll get with you guys in a little bit. You're it's like, What? You're not going to talk with your mouth open? Well, you, you know, I thought I'd change it up. For, <laughs> just switch it up for a little bit and just blame it on the battery, you know? So I think part, part of the reason that my bag is so heavy is because I brought a little bit of extra clothes. Uh, I brought an extra camera. Um, just a couple different things, but I did bring a little bit of extra clothes. I brought two pairs of socks, big thick ones, which I'm going to change into right now, one of them, one of the pairs. I brought a couple shirt, big long um, undershirts, nylon pants, another shirt, and a buff underwear, a towel, and my fleece pajama pants. I'm always the person to say, don't bring too many clothes camping. But I was concerned this time with the, with the the rain and the temperature and the time of year it was. So I could have probably got away with without the extra pants and maybe only one of the extra shirts. But it is what it is. So I'm going to take advantage of it now. I'm going to change into my fleece, pants, and one of my new shirts. And then just throw my uh, puffy jacket on. 
new socks, and my camp shoes. I'm all changed now, nice and dry, and very warm. I'm gonna probably lose this toque actually. My puffy on, new shirt on, my fleece pantaloons, and my dry shoes. So, not only did I bring I brought extra shoes, which I normally never do. I brought, on like an actual distance canoe trip, I brought um, a tarp and a tent, which I normally don't do. I brought a GPS and a spot. These are all new things to me, right? I bought, I brought, um, what else? Extra clothes, like I said. Uh, not too much food at all. But my backpack is definitely heavier. And... Concerned. <laughs> Suck it up. Yes, Papa. All right, what you got going there, Dougie? Uh, epic performance bar and the flavor of lemon. Limon. Have you tried one before? No. Non-GMO. Dates almonds, cage-free egg whites, sea salt, lemon oil, no sugar added. The, the le ingredients are pretty legit. All right. Six ingredients or so. I'm a fan of lemon, but... But... Hey, I smell your boots, I think. Uh-oh. I may be wrong, but I smell something. They're warm, but... Anyway. Going in. What's the texture? What is the texture? It's hmm. chewy gummy. Gummy. I don't know what I would compare that to. How's it taste? It's good. I like the lemon. I like, can really taste the lemon. Well, guys, I think it's uh, about that time. It's just after nine. I'm ready for bed. What do you say, Dougie? I can sleep. You can sleep. Had enough of this. So All right, well, try not to snore too loud and chomp the air. <laughs> and I will, uh, I'll see you in the morning. All right. Peace. Man, it's thundering out there like crazy. Lightning and thunder. It's uh, 3.45 in the morning. It's been raining all night. Get back to bed. And can you guys hear that rain out there? It is coming down like crazy. I literally just heard the loudest thunder, the longest thunder I've ever heard by far in my life. It started in one part of the sky and traveled throughout the rest of the sky. It was crazy. Lightning, tons of rain. I really, really, really hope that it calms down when we get up. But tomorrow, the fact was, it was supposed to thunderstorm all day, so... <laughs> not too uh, not too hopeful for that. So we got oh, just after 4 now. I've been laying here awake for probably about 15 minutes. I want to go back to bed till about 7. I went to bed about 9.30 and crashed hard till f almost 4. Like, did he get up to go pee, so that's really good. Wish me luck. Well, guys, it's just after 7 in the morning. The rain seems to have died down a little bit. I can hear Doug out there talking. A little foggy in here. So we're gonna get out there, see the damage, and uh, get ready for the day. I gotta make some breakfast. So the rain has calmed down for right now, but like it's a very white sky out there. I can see lots of fog. And, um, it's gonna rain again for sure. But <laughs> but uh, it's stopped right now. So in the woods here, it's um it's dripping off the trees like crazy. So it's still coming down. But we got a little window. So. Stupidly last night, we didn't put any wood underneath the tarp and uh, it got all wet and that's okay We can split some down and, and burn it. I got my little I gotta get breakfast going right so I got my twig stove 
my uh, bush buddy. I'm gonna do some oatmeal and granola mixed. But in order to get the fire going, because we didn't keep any dry wood, I'm gonna use my waxwood stick. You guys have seen me use this a couple times before. This is from um, Production Hanger 51. He might have changed his name on Instagram, but I think you can still find him on there. And uh, yeah, it's actually wood. <clears throat> I can shave it down. It lights very easily, and I can even split it down and baton it into little pieces of fuel if I wanted to. Um, that'll definitely get any kind of little split down pieces going. What are you doing? Right. <laughs> Had him just about dry at the fire last night. Put him under the tarp here, and I might as well have stored him in the lake overnight. <laughs> Five pounds of Seriously, they're just yeah. Eh, eh. Oh. <laughs> well, the wind could help a little bit. <laughs> help whip that heat right away from us. Well, it's gonna be a warm day, so. No yeah, but not with rain and 30 kilometer an hour winds. No. Warm is not warm at that point. I'm not warm sitting here, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you. Would you like one for your twig stove? Save this for tomorrow. You steal my saw? Yep. Where? On top of your bag. There's plenty here, Doug. Okay. Okay, cool. So I've Split off a small piece of maybe pine or spruce. Mmm, smells resiny. Just got my little pieces, and this will be more than enough <coughs> to boil my water for my oatmeal. Ba bam. Not that I'm afraid of rain. I ain't afraid. Nice curb. See how easy that lights up? I'll just sit on the edge of the tarp and get the drip. You should do that. Take the ice. Right, and I already got my, my water. Just left my pot open last night. <laughs> well, bam, shunny. Bam, shunny. Bam, son. Okay, shut up. Bam, son. <laughs> in my car. Good for you. Yeah, I didn't want to take them out here. All right, so for my, not lunch, the other meal, breakfast. Normally you'll see me Joe it up with the instant oatmeals and just pour the, the, uh, the water right in there, and that works, but for this trip I wanted something a little bit more... So I got granola and put it with my oatmeal. It's got chunks of almonds and chunks of cranberries and stuff like that. So I put um, a decent amount, probably one extra portion that I would normally eat. So three as opposed to two. And then this is just gonna go right into the um, the water because into the pot because I don't have the, the packages obviously for it to eat it out of. So it's a little bit more messy, a little bit more time consuming, but that's okay. I need some food in my belly. Oh buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. It's comedy. It's not. Yeah, it is. Well, yeah, it is. Someone laughs. No, it someone is. laughs, it's comedy. Oh look, I got a boil! Haha! <laughs> Comedy! <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 
Mm. Oh. Head attack. I'm having a good hair day. I don't really want to work with a hat. Mm hmm. Definitely having a good hair day. Right. Yep. Michael Landon would be proud. You always say Michael Landon. <laughs> I still put, look at that, look at this is soup. That is not acceptable. Oh no, I'm gonna drink that, perfect. Well, breakfast is good, I let it sit. Got not so watery after. Putting this away, my bush buddy flips inside itself like that. Just dropped right in the pot. It goes on. It's got this pretty sweet carrying case. This one's a Tokes pot, uh, 1100, maybe a 900. Um, maybe 1100. I think it's 1100. Let me see. It's bigger than my Snow Peak one. My Snow Peak is a 900. Let me see the, oh, the bush buddy in it. Yeah, it's a uh, 900. 900? I think it's 1100. Okay. We're gonna go with 1100. Put 900 also. People keep asking. What's that? Yeah, no, I had the 900 for originally with oh, it. Oh, okay. Right, like that's the Snow Peak one I got with it. Oh, with the crazy lid. Yeah, the I think. Yeah, the lid. stupid, horrible right. frying pan. I think that was the Andrew Skirko one. I don't know, maybe someone, someone made that one famous anyway. They made that specifically for that, uh, uh, stove. But, that's a good little cook kit, and, uh, very lightweight, and that's all. That's all my whole cook kit. Right there. Right there. Alright, well, just getting packed up. The rain has stopped for now, and, uh, it's a good opportunity to get all of our gear packed away. I'm gonna have so much more water weight in my backpack my tarp and my tent that uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of double carrying today on that big one which is gonna kill some time eat up some time but it's the really probably the only option I have And we're dodging trees <laughs> left and right out here. It's oh the, man. It's not even the, the one, we, we thought one came down, but it's like two or three over there. And then we heard like a, um, well, while we were looking at the two or three that came down, another one <laughs> came down behind that one. It's like, holy crap, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's just kicking up again. And the key is, so before you say, don't put your tent near de dead uh, widow makers, those are all live green trees. Every single one. Every one, they're coming down green. The, literally, we saw the, the, the fulcrum point where it broke or whatever, it was way over a foot big, a foot round on a live tree. So it's like, and I swear this isn't even the windiest it's been today, by far. Yeah. So, we're gonna hang out by the fire a little bit longer mm -hmm. before we go to bed. Yeah. Hope that wind dies down a bit. Yeah, because I don't think I can lay in my tent and sleep with <laughs> like I don't even want to go that way you know I don't like it over there anymore we were sitting here right here at the campfire and we ran we ran because these trees came down what what is that 30 feet not even yeah 30 feet away full 12 inch trees came down <laughs>